Bossier is a tall Haitian man who grew up teaching kids in a large town called Moi. He would have never thought or chosen to live where he is today. But after staying there for a short while, his heart could not let him leave. While Haitians dream of moving to the city, where they can find what we would call basic needs today, Bossier must leave to return to his home in one of the poorest villages of Haiti. Now we take the world to go down in fifth section. The fifth section is an area of land located in the Artibonite Valley. It is one of six sections of land surrounding the city of St. Mark. Its river was the source of a deadly cholera disease that turned into a nationwide epidemic in October 2010. The disease is responsible for over 5,000 deaths, and that number is still rising today. During the breakout, Bossier brought clean water into his village, which resulted in only a single death. Farming by hand is toilsome and grueling work that is done by impoverished people groups all over the world. These rice fields, however, will provide enough to give these farmers a living. But the farther you travel down the winding road, the more difficult the situation becomes. Out here, flash flooding from the river destroys farmers' fields on a yearly basis. This is currently the situation for the fields of Bossier's village, which for the past three days have been two feet under water. My village, Ruben Blockfoy, is over there. To get there, he rides in a handmade canoe. The only hope the people has here it's plant rice everywhere. But the water take the field, they cannot plant any rice. The only thing I can tell them, Jesus is the answer. Just wait for him. This is where Bossier has decided to call his new home. He has accepted the call to serve as a pastor to these people. This is the Artibonite River at its fullest. Normally, it is six to nine feet lower. The only reason the village itself has not flooded is because they built a wall of mud around the river's edge. But water still finds a way through by seeping up from the ground. It enters homes along the riverbank, making them no longer usable. This village is called Lubin and it's home to over 200 men, women, and children. Houses here are made using mud, straw, and wood. A frame is made using wood and nails. Then a mixture of mud and straw is wrapped around the frame. Some homes add an extra layer of clay to protect from the rain. And most families find scraps of tin to use for the roof. Rain melts the mud framework. 
Even with repairs, these houses can only last up to five years. Weaving palm leaves into a wall is one temporary alternative. Rain only comes in the wet season. In the dry season, rain is sparing, and they rely on irrigation coming from the river. Without water flowing through the proper channels, their fields dry up. But the past few years of rain and river overflow from the wet season has wiped out many villages' irrigation systems, including those in Lubins. When the river drops and Bossier can once again walk to his village, the ground will look like this. This was taken from last year's dry season, and it is the exact same field. Some farmers at the time were able to irrigate their rice plants by constantly moving them to lower fields. Lubin's rice fields will look like this once again in a few months. With the river and rain constantly destroying their crops, most have resolved to eating only one meal of rice a day. They prepare the meal by first breaking off the rice shells using a motor and pestle. They toss it in the air so that the wind takes away the remaining shell pieces. The grains are cooked in a large metal pot for the whole family. They mix in beans and any available spices. Flour is cheap and can be cooked into bread and sold to those looking for a quick meal. They also weave nets to catch small fish and shrimp. They do this by weaving palm leaves into a rope and then weaving that rope around wooden sticks. Kids passing this through the water find a decent amount of small fish and shrimp. This provides them with meat when they have little livestock. A lot of their wealth is in the cows, pigs, goats, and chickens that they own. Another problem with flash floods is that they carry away these valuable assets. Kids find ways to make toys from trash. They only need dirt and rocks to play the Haitian version of Mancala. Soccer has always been Haiti's favorite sport. Kids and adults alike will play it if they can find a ball. <laughs> Bossier has lived here since 2010, when he moved into the cement house and church built by a Christian organization called Youth of the Mission. He first saw this place when he was a student in the organization's discipleship program in 2009. The leader, Terry Snow, he just said, let's go to visit somewhere and he come down here. When I began to, to meet people, village after village, my heart is broken because this is the first time, it was the first time in my life I see people live like that.
we have a poor country, but see the people and this situation, I didn't see that before. So I cannot resist. I cry a lot. After that day, we go back and I always think about what I'm come to see. After my DDS, I go back home, my wife and I, and one day I receive a, a call from Terry. Terry asked me, Bo, um, we have a mission for you. And I tell him, okay, talk, and I'm listening. He said, do you remember Ruben Block 4? We want to send you there and live with these people to start with a church and a school. And I said, what? Okay. And I talked with God about that, and God told me to go and live with those people. I answered to Terry, yes. My wife and I decided to go and live in Lubin, Block 4. But for now, my wife is not with me because wait for a baby. But Bossier was walking into more than a forgotten village. When Bossier came, he intended to change things for the better, and in doing so, he was stepping into a spiritual battlefield. I live here as a pastor. On Monday, we have study Bible. On Wednesday, we have four hour and prayer at night. And Friday, we take the time to evangelize the village. Most people in the area practice voodoo, which in its basic belief says that there are spirits that travel among the earth and there are ways that we can communicate and interact with them. But those that practice voodoo say it isn't all bad. It really depends on what kind of spirits you choose to deal with. Some even find it offensive that Christians come in and change what they believe is an important part of Haitian culture. But this religion might be the cause of most of their problems. In Haiti, voodoo has a notorious reputation of bringing curses and death from those who say they have powers to communicate with the other world. For these people, this is not fiction. And Bossier can explain what exactly this has done. Voodoo make the people uh, like bring in their heart fear. The witch doctor always do something who make the people like and give them fear in their heart. For example, they, they sometimes send a demon spirit against someone and kill him. And then the, the witch doctor said, okay, he's not dead. I'm gonna show you something. Um, he, 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 he made a ceremony and end this ceremony and he invite the demon spirit to go upon this, this man, this person and so that when they say this person live again, they say, oh wow, the witch doctor is very strong. He has a lot of power. Villages in the fifth section are full of witch doctors offering their powers to locals and visitors. For example, when a people has sick, he has to consult a witch doctor to find healing. He have to pay for that. For example, he asked me to give $50, and I give him 20, and I cannot give the rest of money. He sent the demon spirit back against me so that I stay always in fear. Witch doctors use fear to demand people